All right, guys, uh, welcome back here. We had to fix some technical difficulties in some of our uh, stage settings and also camera settings and um, things like that. So thanks for, for your patience in that. I'm going to get this sort of repositioned here. Let's see. Let's see, oops. So hopefully you guys getting a good angle there now. Let's see. All right, bear with me. Uh, that's not working either. guys <laughs> okay is that okay let's see <laughs> I'm sorry let's <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Is this better? <laughs> oh my lord. Why is that spinning if I don't want it to spin? Is that better? All right, now I think, all right, that's good. All right, guys, so um, I think we got everything set up now better. Um, so, sorry about the, in the uh, interruptions there, guys. So that's nice and hot. Get ready to do our browning of the meat. But first, we got to dice up these uh, garlic and onions. Just dicing up the 
garlic and onions. I just prefer to use fresh as opposed to powdered. Uh, sometimes, depending on seasonal seasonal availability of certain things, you you have to use some powders. And sometimes they work better than maybe the fresh one to give you the intensity that you need. But um, I'm opting for the fresh garlic and fresh onion as opposed to onion powder and garlic powder, which a lot of people use. It's handy. It's time saving. And like I say, you can adjust your intensity a little bit maybe with those powders. And but however, I, there's nothing that's going to be more delicious than the fresh, the fresh raw ingredients from scratch, especially with my mashed potatoes that I'll be doing here a little bit later. So, with that in mind, we're going to get my sink ready so I can wash my hands as soon as I have to handle this meat. I don't want it burning my hands. So. not contaminated uh, so we don't have to worry about that but that's one thing to always keep in mind guys is sanitary bleach warm water and a little bit of bleach solution keep things uh, clean and of course after you touch the meat you want to wash your hands I'm a real big bleach person Cecil is too we use a lot of bleach on in the kitchen in the bathroom on the floors mopping countertops, lots of bleach, and we do that all the time before this, this terrible thing. So keep that in mind, guys. It's something to continue on with if you're not used to doing that, which I think most people probably are, but Drain the drain the fat off, fat or grease off of it. Also, I think we need it. Oh, that's probably turned up enough. So we're going to brown it because it's still going to be baking. So I'm just browning it to get that that bit of browning flavor that happens, and that may not happen in the oven. And uh, but if it's still not 100% cooked. It's gonna be in the oven at a 350 degrees for an hour. So it'll continue cooking. Now, I made sure when I when I did my rice, and I said 20 minutes, it might have been 15 minutes. That once I brought it to a boil, I might have actually let it simmer more like 15 because I thought, well, it's gonna continue cooking in the oven. So same thing with your meat or your rice when you're doing this stuffed bell peppers or anything that you're going to be putting into the oven for an hour at a high temp. It doesn't have to be 100% cooked when you prepare it to stick it in the oven because it's going to be cooked when it's done. So keep that in mind also uh, as a little bit of a time saver and also too you want to dry out your dry out your rice or dry out your beef or your uh, your pork sausage. You don't need to overcook them and dry them out because they're going to continue cooking inside. And a lot of that's going to release flavors also throughout the rest of the items that they're they're marrying together in there with the bell peppers and the 
tomato sauce. So keep that in mind. You don't have to overcook it, just brown it. And uh, but this is gonna be 100% cooked when it's done. So we'll go ahead and add this onions and garlic diced up in here. Not too much diced, a little bit. We'll let that do some stuff there. But this handy little thing here is a catch-all for any kind of grease. Bacon grease, sometimes if you're doing just strictly want a, a dedicated cup for bacon grease because it's so good to cook in green beans and many other dishes, making gravies, uh, you can keep one dedicated. Or you can have one that at any point you just want to have a, a place to have your catch-all. It's ceramic, you can stand the heat, you can drain your grease right into here. Let it cool, discard it when you want to, or use it for other cooking items, for flavoring, gravies or sauces. So keep that in mind also, guys. browning up there pretty good. I have the heat on high enough to where it's browning quickly. I'm not trying to really cook it so much as I am just trying to brown it. And when I feel like it's all pretty uniformly browned up, then I'm going to go ahead and get it ready to stuff the peppers. You guys can see see how it's starting to brown I'm going to be mixing this pretty good because remember I'm using I'm using a, basically a pound of hamburger and a pound of sweet Italian sausage so I want them to be mixed pretty good so they all marry together you can do that when you make spaghetti also. A lot of people just make spaghetti with hamburger, and some people just use Italian sausage, or sometimes you can blend them together. And um, as a rule, when we make spaghetti, we generally go 100% Italian sweet sausage. Um, but this time, I like I said, because we had limitations on how much hamburger meat we could buy and I didn't think that was going to be enough because in addition to the in addition to the stuffing inside the bell peppers which you can see I actually could use one more big bell pepper which we don't have so that's probably going to be more than enough to stuff these. Any leftover, it's gonna be added into like the sauce that you're gonna be doing some marinating with um, throughout its baking in the oven for an hour at 350. So that tomato sauce 
any of the leftover meat that's not going to be contained inside these bell peppers, it's just going to be around in, in, the, in the tomato sauce also, which we're also going to be using for a gravy for the mashed potatoes. So it's okay. I wanted to have a little extra for that reason. So, you know, if it doesn't look like this is going to fit into that, I have a plan. Once I get this browned up um, and drained, we're going to be draining the grease from here. It's not a lot. Most of it's probably from the Italian sausage, but even that, it's pretty lean. But we'll drain whatever grease that we need to. When you're browning something, you have to. Uh, that's ground like this. You, you have to keep you have to keep with it pretty good so that it's all uniform and browning evenly, not burning on just one side of it. And uh, so once we get this all browned up, let that sit for a minute. Once we get that all browned up, then we're gonna be adding our rice to this and mixing that in there good. So in the meantime, while we're letting that continue doing its thing, we're going to, uh, this thing is just, and this one too, too big for the drawer. That one really is almost too big for the drawer. I think this is, I'm gonna stick over here. Oh, that's why that thing was out there. Now we got one instead of two, but they're stuck in the drawer. Oh well. Um, talking, talking amongst myself. So I'm going to get this opened up. Now, a lot of people will say you like eight ounces of this tomato sauce when you're doing these stuffed bell peppers. That's pretty, pretty common. A pound of hamburger, uh, eight ounces of tomato sauce. And, this and that. Six bell peppers. You know, those are sort of standard quantities and things like that. Um, I have a little extra. It's okay if I end up with too much. I will uh, use what I, I need necessary, but I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be thin on tomato sauce because I want lots of extra sauce on there um, because we're going to be using that as the gravy for the mashed potatoes. This wouldn't really be a meal where you'd have like regular brown gravy or anything like that, or white gravy. This is definitely something that you, you want the, the sauce from your main event to be your gravy. And that's why I say I have some leftovers uh, of the stuffing, have that mixed in with a little extra of the, the sauce. Um, and then you get that bell pepper that starts baking and getting those juices from the bell pepper that gives it that special flavor. Um, that just makes for the perfect gravy for your mashed potatoes, which, like I said, it's a lot of work. But we're going to do those too. And this, I don't know if I showed you this, but the jalapeno sauce. So we got tomato sauce and some jalapeno sauce. Just to give it a little, not so much flavor a little bit of a bite. It won't be much, even if noticeable at all, but we'll find out. Now there was actually a habanero tomato sauce that I saw, but I just didn't want to go there for this. I might use a habanero tomato sauce for some Mexican food items that I'd be preparing. Where you, you want that not only just the flavor, but that intense heat. Um, I actually sent my brother a picture of 
the can of the habanero tomato sauce. But I, I'm thinking along the lines of that for more Mexican food items for the people that really like it hot. So this will have a little bit, but I didn't want to go crazy. That's starting to brown up really good and smell good. Okay, like I said, it doesn't have to be 100% cooked because it's going to be in the oven for an hour at 350, so I don't need to overdo it. I'm going to get ready to drain this and then add our rice. And don't forget, this is actually cooking and drinking with Cameron. So, I'm going to see what I can do here. Um, I'm going to get this ready to do some draining. I need a nice spoon, probably like this. This is a pretty safe way to do. You know, some people will grab that pan. So I can turn that off now. Um, they'll grab that pan and try to put like a, a lid over it or a plate. And it's so easy to burn yourself like that. Now, you stay over there, son of a bee. But my wife taught me this trick, and it's so safe, is you get it down to where it's stable. Stable and you're not using a lid that then steam can come up and burn you or spill. And So you just go like this. It's a little slower. Be used to a little ladle. And you get it out of there like that. It's not gonna be have to be bone dry. You just wanna get the majority of it out there. Think about this cooking with grease. You always oops. You always have to keep in mind that this grease goes into your body. What is it doing to your arteries? So you want to get some of that out of there. It's just healthier. But it is delicious. Especially when you're making tacos. There's nothing like a good greasy taco. But like they didn't drain it at all. It's running all down your fingers and it is delicious. But you gotta try to be a little healthy along the ways too. So cooking here with Cameron, you're looking at healthy things like this and also healthy and the sanitary way of using bleach and things like that to do your countertops and dishes and whatnot. So that's enough. So I don't need to have it on the heat now because it's cooked as much as it needs to be cooked. The rice is cooked as much as it needs to be cooked. It's going to be going in the oven at 350 for an hour. It'll cook the rest of the way as well as the rice. So, that's good. That much is done. Took me two hours and 45 minutes, but I got this far. Okay. Now we're gonna get that oven going. The 350. Thereabouts. You're gonna be checking in on it periodically and getting a, your ladle and you know spooning some of the, the tomato sauce juices uh, up over into the, the stuffed bell peppers. You're gonna be doing that periodically so that it keeps the top moist and not drying out and cooking more evenly.
Alright, so we're going to get this rice. Remember guys, this is a half a cup of rice. And the thing is, is if, if you were doing some of those Spanish meatballs I was mentioning earlier, you probably want, see I have basically almost two pounds of meat as opposed to one pound. But that rice helps hold those big meatballs together for Spanish meatballs. So you'd want to have a little more concentration of, or more, more of a balance. So you'd have like maybe a whole cup of rice instead of a half a cup of rice if you're using two pounds of meat to make your Spanish meatballs. That's another meatball story. But anyway, um, we're not wanting this to necessarily stay together. It's going to get soupy and saucy, and that's what we want. We don't want it to be sticky. As you can see, I'm just marrying together a half cup rice with my two pounds of meat, which is one pound of hamburger and one pound of sweet Italian sausage. Marrying that together with the rice. Just want it to be sort of consistent. So I don't have any big balls of rice in there, it's all sort of blended together. And that's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good, guys. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let that stay there for now. Oven is preheating at 350, and um, I got to prep my bell peppers so that we can get them loaded into the the baking pan and ready to stuff, so to speak. Although it's going to be a little tricky because these are going to be laying sideways as opposed to like that. It's going to be great. All right, so we are going to get these things washed up good, take the little stickers off of them. And uh, then we can prep them. I'm sure at some point in time somebody has left one of these stickers on and baked it. Somebody actually got it on their fork as they're taking a bite. And I'm talking about restaurants. I bet it's happened. Yeah, it's not the worst thing that could happen, I guarantee. It's not the worst thing. You know what I mean? So hello everybody and welcome to Island Reaction. I am Cameron Cooper. You're watching some cooking and drinking with Cameron. We're making some stuffed bell peppers and mashed potatoes. And we're getting 
we're getting a little bit closer to doing some mashed potato business, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it because it's so much work. It is a lot of work, let me tell you. Now I can do this over here so you guys can see. We're basically just gonna get these prepped to put in the baking dish. So, I'll tell you one thing, since they've had this business, they're running out of everything, especially paper products in the stores, all I can get is these dumbass paper towels that are, they're worthless. I like that Viva paper towels that choose any side Vivas, that they're, they're really strong, they're excellent, but I haven't seen those in a month. So. These things, I can't even tear one off of the roll without ripping half of it off, and it's like, I couldn't even, you know, it's fake news. It says, uh, choose a sheet, choose a size, but you can't because it shreds before you rip it apart. So let's prep this stuff here. Now this one actually is gonna be best one. <laughs> That's a little bit of onion right there, I'd care. Now one thing I I failed to mention um, now so basically I, I just barely clipped the top of that off and I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the various membrane sides that hold that sort of the guts inside so this all comes out with the seeds and any of the other seeds left inside uh, you're going to be able to scoop that out a little bit but you don't want to leave the seeds in there guys so toss them um, do them all at the same time so now some of these extra pieces of the um, the bell peppers. Uh, we're going to keep that. We're going to dice them up, and we're going to add that into our meat and rice. So it's going to give our gravy and our sauce a little bit more of the bell pepper because we have minimal amounts of bell pepper actually. So doing that, we're going to get that bell pepper flavor added into the mix of the meat. Even if you didn't really have a piece of a big bell pepper, you're going to get that flavor. And ideally, if you wanted to, you could dice all this stuff up, put it in the mix, bake it like that, more like a casserole. It would be just as delicious. Cover it with cheese. Might do that sometime. So, anyway, enough of that. I'm going to go ahead and get the next one going here. Okay, that's my top. And... So the, the reason you do that little skim off of the top is so you can now be able to get to the inside and know where you're trimming to cut out the core with the seeds. So that's why you're doing that little bit of a cut at the top like that. So then you can do your business that you need to do. I suppose there's another way, but I like that. All right, again. Any of this green stuff we don't want. It's probably it's probably bitter. It's very sturdy. I'm sure it's very bitter. You wouldn't want to bite into it, eat it. So see, that's a, that's a lot of bell peppers right there. Plants. See how many seeds. If we are into being able to do some gardening. That would be nice, but that's not something we can do right now. So we're just going to toss them. 
Now, some of you folks there, especially in Indiana, you got some nice sized yards. The weather gets just right. You guys can do some good planting. And you could you could make some nice bell peppers. Now this didn't do like I wanted. Do. Yes, darling. Hi. Baby wants to be excited about this business too. Okay. I probably could have cut it a little bit deeper and then I wouldn't have to do that little extra step right there. You're watching TV? Terrific. I'm on TV. There's some more of those. All right, so now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and scoop them out so we can get them loaded up into the baking pan. And as far as scooping them out, um, I think this will be a good scooper. It needs to be sturdy because you're doing a little bit of scraping. And then we're going to rinse them so we get all the seeds out. Okay. You don't have to over scrape them. It's okay if some of those bigger pieces of the membrane are still in there. If they don't have seeds stuck to them, that's okay. You just want to get rid of the seeds. Because some people actually, I've, I've heard, now I'm not a medical expert, I've heard that some people have that condition called diverticulitis. That little seeds and things like that can be very painful or deadly to them. They get stuck in your colon or something like that and cause inflammation. I think they call that diverticulitis. So as a rule, anytime you're, you're preparing food, dishes, what have you, you want to get rid of seeds because if you don't have a problem with them, somebody that eats it could. And it could be, it could be a you know, more serious kind of situation for them. So just keep that in mind. Some of that stuff you wouldn't know unless you had just encountered it. So now we're going to rinse these out. I rinsed them all good. There's no seeds in there. this stuff up and put it in to my actual sauce area. Or actually, I'm, uh, I don't know. I could sort of, no. I could dice it up and put it in here, or I could put it around into the sauce. I think I'm going to put it around into the sauce, maybe, because this stuff will be going into these, so that'll be better. All right, so I'll be right back and we're gonna get on to stuffing these peppers.
Oh my, I've got a toddler chasing me. I've got a toddler chasing me. Okay guys, I am back, and you are watching Ion Reaction, cooking with Cameron. We are making some stuffed bell peppers and mashed potatoes, and our gravy, so you know, our gravy is our sauce. So what's next? Let me think. Oven's preheated. Peppers are ready to stuff. I've got my little tops that I've sliced off that I'm going to be putting into I'm going to be putting them into um, I want them diced up pretty good. So I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to use this little food processor to deal with those little pieces of the bell pepper that I want to be adding into my sauce pretty much. So to make that a little easier, I'm going to use this food processor and it's ready to go. We're going to give it just a little quick rinse. Just in case it's been sitting there and got a little dust or something. It's always clean when we put it away, but just to be safe, we're gonna put that on there. So okay. Rinse that a little bit. And rinse the lid. Okay. With that in mind, I'm gonna take these pieces. My little tops that I cut off, I'm going to throw those in there like so, so I can be adding it to my uh, sauce mix. All right. I could add it to the meat also. That's a possibility. I sort of want to do that, and I sort maybe I could do both. I don't know. Just I don't want them to go to waste. I want them to add that flavor. But I think I'd rather have it in the sauce than in the meat. Because you're going to get plenty of bell pepper flavor from the bell pepper that's seeping into the meat. And um, so if I have it in the sauce, maybe that's better. It's a judgment call, guys. Remember, you're the boss when you're cooking. So I'm taking down to like a bigger relish size, I think. And um, one thing about cooking, you always end up with lots of utensils and dishes because better use lots of utensils to do dishes than to cross contamination. Uh, hi, are you helping me? Are you my little helper? Good job. You're doing a terrific job. Chef, Junior Chef. If you had a Jaws tank top and a big belly, you could be a redneck chef too. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get this. And I'm not ready to put it, uh, my sauce stuff yet. So I'm going to set this aside. You can see I got it about relish size. Those are just my tops. Just a little, add a little something, no waste. A little extra flavoring, guys. Or, oh, you know what I'm going to do? This is what I'm going to do. Because it's not that much. Instead of doing a sauce and putting it in the meat, I'm going to be topping my bell peppers. I'm going to be topping them with some sauce. I'm going to be topping them with some of the uh, shredded Parmesan cheese. I'm going to top... Before 
maybe before I put the sauce on top of the bell pepper, I'm gonna top them with this, then put the sauce, then put the cheese. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Use it as my topping. You don't want to go to waste, it's gonna be that much better. Okay, let's get these. Pan is out of frame, so we're gonna move the pan over here. And how we're gonna get them in the pan, because like I say, they're not gonna stand up all of them. We'll figure that out, but it's not a big deal. Don't let it be the end of your bell pepper, stuck bell peppers because they won't stand up. It's not a big deal, guys. I've been down that road before where it was like, it was like, it was like the end of the world because the, pep, the bell peppers wouldn't stand up straight. Guess what? Not the end of the world. Now, I'm gonna do just a little bit of a, a light Pam spray, fake Pam. It's just a, a vegetable oil spray, just so you get a little less sticking possibly. Do it around the sides and the edges like this because it's gonna be in the oven at 350 for an hour, so you just wanna be able to make sure it's not horribly sticking or horribly sticking or hard to clean either one's not good and you can eliminate it with a little bit of fake pan all right now you don't put anything in the bottom of this and as far as how big is this pan, I don't really know. It's a pan that basically, oh, I, that's one thing I could do on some of these. Like I want this one to stand up. You could trim off the bottom slightly like that. See, that wasn't very much at all. So, look at that. So now it's sitting up straight. Now, like I said, some of these are, I had to cut off a lot for it to <laughs> for it to sit up straight. So that one's gonna work, but I just don't see how I could cut off. <laughs> Let's see what I can do here. I don't know. Of course, you've also opened it up, but it's gonna be filled up, and the meat's gonna be sticking in there. So it's not like it's got oh, you pick it up, oh, it all runs out the bottom. It's not really like that bad. Okay, that one actually, <laughs> hey, that one's going to work too. I'm going to end up with more stuff to dice up. So some of this is going to go inside the mixture, I think, now. Let's see. Hey! You never, now I, this is ideally when you, when you pick your bell peppers, the perfect ones for stuffing. This is about as much as you'd want to have to trim off of a bottom so that it sits straight. These here, look at how thick those are. Ideally, you don't want to have to cut that much off of one so that it sits straight. So, but I have to tell you, when you're going to the market to pick your bell peppers, I would say if you really want to make a nice presentation and when sitting up straight, and you want them the, the biggest bell peppers as absolutely possible, number one. And whether you go with all one color, green, or mixture of colors, I think the greens have the more potent flavor than the other ones. Reds have a really sweet flavor, and the green ones have a more um, intense flavor. It's not sweet, just an intense bell, bell pepper flavor. You get the bell pepper flavor from the red one, but it's a little more on the sweet side. The yellow ones are a little bit more on the neutral side, I think. But you still do get a bell pepper flavor from all of them. But if you really want the really best true bell pepper influence, go with green only. Because that's the most intense flavor. In my opinion. And I am the chef here at Island Reaction, and it is my opinion.
So as you can see, I'm missing one bell pepper. I, I don't know, can you see? How this happened, I don't know. I went to the market to buy all my items, knowing, should be knowing, that I needed six. My wife gave me this one. I would have only had four. So thanks to my wife, you're not seeing that. You're seeing this. Well, maybe instead of dicing these up, <laughs> I'm going to make a compromise. Instead of dicing these up, which I already have some diced up for adding into the sauce, I'm going to put those down here like this. So you get to say that's a that's almost a bell pepper if you put it all together. Because um, some of them are pretty thick. Just consider that a flat bell pepper. And I'm going to stuff it on the top instead of on the inside. <laughs> but I think that'll work. I like my idea. So I'm going to leave those there like that. I think they're going to go sliding around unless I lay them super flat. Let's, let's lay them super flat so they don't slide all over. All right, so there's a flat bell pepper. So be creative, guys, in the kitchen, okay? Not the end of the world. Certainly nothing to go cry about. So now we're going to go ahead and stuff these. And um, I think I like this spoon for stuffing. Rinse that off. All right. Mm. Well, I got to move some stuff here, guys. Get rid of this. I'm done chopping up. This can sit up there. This and this can sit over there. And put one of these things down just in case it's hot. And let's move this pan of our stuffing right there. And hopefully you guys can see all that. So we're gonna stuff these up now. And you know, once again, if you're stuffing these things and oh, some of it got over the edge Oh my God, what am I going to do? You know what? Our sauce we're making is actually going to be going over inside, over the edge anyway. So just stuff these things and quit crying about it. Stuff them. Spoon that stuff in there and you can pack it down in there. Actually, I would probably suggest to pack it down because if you have enough. Now we had two pounds of meat, so we certainly have enough. So my arm's not getting in the way. I'm gonna bring this up to you guys so you can get a good bird's eye view here momentarily. So this is really smelling good, guys, I gotta tell you. It's really smelling great. Now pack it down in there. We don't care if we have a lot or a little for this leftover. I'm not trying to save any. It's the whatever have I have left over, it's going into my sauce. So just so you know, I'm not trying to conserve any of this stuff. Stuffing stuff. All right. Now, I don't necessarily want it to the top because I, I want to have a little bit of space. Pack that down in there. Get in there. Now, yeah, I want to have a little bit of space, as you can see, going down into it because I'm going to be putting some sauce in there. Um, I'm going to be putting some of the relish in there and stuff like that. So. If you just layer it all on the top, it just start falling off anyway. So leave a little bit of a 
of a pit so that you can keep filling it in there a little bit. And I'm not gonna be concerned about actually topping these flat ones there. They could just be there. At least I don't have a big empty space right there. It's got something. All right, so um, we're gonna top this now. So now we're actually ready to do my sauce. Oh no, I said I was not gonna put this in the sauce. I said I was gonna make this little bit of a relish to put on top. I don't know that it really matters. It's all marrying together so quickly. Um, but you do wanna put some sauce in here, whether you put a little bit of the relish on there or not. Um, doesn't matter. So, with that in mind, we're done mixing that thing. Uh, let me think what I want to do. I think I am going to go ahead and I'm going to just spoon a little bit of this relish on top there, like so, on each of these. A little bit. I don't only have a little bit anyway. Put that in there like that. Boy, it's really looking colorful, almost like a Christmas tree. So, all right, let's go ahead and put that there like that. All right. All right, that's looking good. Now, we still got to put sauce. So, now what I've done is I've got them stuffed with our meat mixture with the rice. And hopefully you can get a really good bird's eye view there. And now I've stuffed them with a little bit of my, my diced up tops from my bell peppers to make a little relish. Stuff that on there like that. And we are going to do our sauce now. So let's rinse this. We're going to use this for our sauce. All right, so I think I'm gonna use this bowl right here because I want to. I do want to use my jalapeno sauce because, and you see it's red. I want that in there like that. And then how much of this I can get in the bowl of just my tomato sauce. And looks like it's gonna to marry together pretty good. So I may end up using the whole thing, I don't know. I don't want the pan to be bubbling over in the oven, so. We won't go that high on the level with this sauce, but so I'm going to be marrying this together. So if it gives a little bit of an extra little bit of a spiciness, uh, that's okay. I like spicy, so if I can add a little bit of a bite to something, to me, it's like, oh yeah, why not? I don't have to murder my mouth every time with habanero or something, but hey, something that's fun. But for this purpose, and what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and dump some of that right there. That's why I, had, I needed to have that little divot inside so that it could actually hold some sauce on there. The cheese doesn't need to be held because it's sticky. And, but you want some of that sauce to be able to, when it starts baking and getting hot in the oven, this sauce that I'm capping this off with, it's gonna start getting hot and simmering down in through the meat that we've stuffed inside these bell peppers. So it's like, just the best of both worlds. All right, so with that in mind, and if it goes, runs over the edge, great. Make it like a lava volcano. Let it go all over the place, okay? It's sauce. The more sauce, the merrier, right? Now, um, I think, I think I'm gonna be able to use a lot of this sauce in my pan. Like I said, I don't want it overflowing and being too too high on the level like that. But I think I'm going to go ahead and the rest of this meat, I'm going to go ahead and just let it throw down in there, around in here like this. Because 
when you start spooning these out once it's baked, um, you get down into the pan to get your sauce and stuff. You're going to be getting this little extra bits of meat in your sauce, gravy, sauce, aka, AKA gravy. And uh, there we go. So, this is looking and smelling really terrific, guys. I got to tell you. I'm not even kidding. So, move some of that around there like that. Okay. Now, we're going to go ahead and just, as opposed to just pouring it in one area, I'm just going to go ahead and spoon it over all the way so I want to try to get it uniformly into the pan. I think next time what I would do is actually have some in the pan already before I start placing my... So it's easier to get it in there. Hi. Oh, what is that? It's a Oh, okay. Now... You can't fix it. I don't know. See if mommy can help you, darling, because daddy's really busy right now. I'm only doing a live stream cooking and drinking and making stuffed potatoes and mashed potatoes. She wants me to fix a toy. Get her off the stage. I'm just kidding. I love her. Okay. Um... This is looking really good. I almost wish I had a little bit more sauce. But you know, one thing I gotta remember, I could add a little bit of hot water at any point throughout the baking process. Now, let me just show you where we're at, guys. And get it a little close up. It's getting heavy. So I've got everything plated into the baking pan and looking really good. Now, the next thing we do before we throw it into the preheated oven at 350 degrees for one hour is we're gonna top these son of a guns with some shredded parmesan. And don't be skimpy. When it comes to cheese, you can never have enough cheese. Unless someone's cutting it, then you want as little as possible. <laughs> so, if you get my drift. Woohoo! Okay, now, that was so, so rude. I'm sorry. My brother would have laughed. Charles Peterson would laugh also. Over there. Oh, hi, pay lines. If anybody from Pay lines is watching. Hey guys, thanks for all your live streams and keeping us busy. Watch when we can. So once again, this is something that you know what? I'm not going to try to save any. There. Now bring this back up to you guys for a bird's eye view before it pops into the oven for one hour at 350 degrees. There you go. For our stuffed bell peppers. So, with that being said, let's put it in the oven. And, okay. And we're gonna be keeping an eye on it. If I need to add a little bit of water to my sauce in the bottom of the pan, I will. I don't know yet because depending on how much juice has come down out of the baking process of the bell peppers, it may release juices into that sauce and keep the level right where it needs to be. But I'm going to be prepared to add some uh, water in there because I want it a more on the soupy or saucy side because that's going to be our gravy for the mashed potatoes, which we're going to be starting momentarily. So once again, thanks for watching Island Reaction. I am Cameron Cooper and we are, we are making stuffed bell peppers with mashed potatoes. Let me do a little bit of prep work cleanup and uh, take a quick break and figure my planned, uh, my, my workstation and everything for these potatoes because they have to be 
uh, peeled, washed, cut. The pan has to be made ready with hot water, with some salt, uh, not a lot. Um, and we're, we're gonna get bring that pan of water to a boiling as we, uh, then we'll start placing the uh, cut up, not too big, not too small pieces of uh, fresh, uh, russet potatoes from Idaho and uh, those will cook until um, I say they're done there's really not depending on your oven and your heat I mean your uh, stovetop and your heat your pan size and the temperature and the water and all this basically I'll, I'll show you what you need to know to make sure you don't overcook the potato because if you overcook your potato while you're boiling it to make your mashed potatoes if you overcook it it's gonna get real starchy and real unworkable and it's not going to make for a delicious flavor of a mashed potato so basically um, if you can call the potato flaky while it's immersed in water that's sort of what you're after um, you want to be able to use a fork to uh, gingerly just go into it and see that it sort of flakes apart inside the water there you know you've got the the right thing now, immediately after you know you've got that potato cooked to the level that you need it to be to make good mashed potatoes, you want to remove it from the heat and get some cold water on it right away because they'll continue cooking after you take them off the burner and they could reach that, if they're close enough, they could reach that starchiness point that you don't want to hit. And when I say starchy, you'll know if you get a starchy, overcooked starchy potato when you're boiling them, um, it gets real milky looking your water that you're working with gets real milky and foamy and you'll know but anyway my point being is that as soon as you know it's just the right point i'll show you um you want to get it into some cold water and uh and stop that cooking process and they're still going to be hot enough to go ahead and start working with to start uh using your mixer and adding your uh excuse me milk and butter and extra salt, some black pepper, uh, to make the perfect mashed potatoes, the perfect consistency, and I'll be explaining that along the way while I'm doing it. It's just one of those things, maybe if you if you watch somebody do it, um, it's much easier to understand what the hell they're talking about. I could explain it and write it down on paper and everything else, but um, I guarantee if you went to do it, you wouldn't get the potatoes that I'm making because it's just something you have to learn through trial and error or you watch someone like I watched my grandmother Dorothy years ago when I was like 10 years old I watched her and helped her she taught me how to make mashed potatoes perfect and how to make gravy from scratch and um, lots of little tricks they seem simple but unless you know just the right thing to do at the right time um, it doesn't turn out the way you need it to so, with that being said, I'm going to take a quick break, uh, get self-organized and prep for getting these potatoes clean and prepped so we can make some mashed potatoes, guys. And, got to keep an eye on our clock. We're also going to be taking a peek inside the oven and see what they're doing. I'll probably, uh, I, I possibly will bring the camera down so you can see it in the oven. I don't know. Because um, it's, it's a hassle to try to get my camera. It's just right, I think. So, anyway, we're looking at about right there for these guys and that pretty much gives me enough time to get these potatoes pretty long pretty far along the way so by the time these things are ready to come out of the oven our potatoes should be looking pretty pretty close to being done so if you have not done so already please subscribe click and subscribe like us and um, we appreciate you watching us here on Island Reaction I am Cameron Cooper you're watching Island Reaction cooking with Cameron and drinking I'm going to take a quick break and we'll be back and get this underway for our mashed potatoes.
Okay, so we got it ready. I don't need this in my way. I actually, actually this needs to go away. Uh, I gotta peel some potatoes, guys. Before we start peeling the potatoes, we need to get our pot of water boiling because a big pot like this, like you use for potatoes, falling down on me here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to need this. And, and these are already washed here, so we're going to fill this up with water and get it, start boiling this big pan before you start peeling your potatoes because believe me even if you're using some hot water and I've heard this it's like well a pot of cold water will boil faster than a pot of hot water I don't know if I believe that that just doesn't make any sense so I'm using hot water from the tap and I'm gonna get that boiling add a little bit of salt and uh, and it takes a while because it's a big pot so um, and I'll fill it up a nice level so I can drain a little bit if I need to for my level not to overflow. But I want to make sure I have enough and it's already boiling. So we're going to go ahead and get that going before I start peeling my potatoes. So if I'm out of camera, I'm just right here filling up the pot. Speaking of pot, those medical marijuana dispensaries, they're just like a line out the a line out the door and all the way around the building. It's like, well, I can't go to work, can't go to school, might as well just stay home. I I'm so I'm supposed to stay home. Oh, I'm just gonna stay home. Hey, I'm home. Oh, yeah, it's for my health. Oh. Okay, so. I'll go ahead and put a little salt in there so I don't forget. Just a little. I'm going to. Add a little salt maybe later to my potatoes, but just to get them started, I'm going to put a little bit of salt in there. See, that wasn't much. So let's get that boiling, and let's start peeling potatoes. I wish I had five peelers with me right now. Just peel those, peel those, peel those, peel those. Okay, thank you. Bat it down. Just me. Peeling potatoes. All right, now, I am making a little bit of a mess, but I am going to be cleaning it up. I am going to be cleaning it up, folks. This is clean. That doesn't even want to fit in there. I hate drawers. You can't get anything out of them, and you can't get anything in them. So I'm going to leave that there like that because I'll need that spatula later for our business we're doing in the oven, possibly. That saucepan, I don't really need that. I do need this space here. Uh, this I don't have to have right this second. What I need is I need some space to do some peeling. And then I'm going to put some papers in here because when you're doing your... Um, I'll show you, rather than try to explain it. So, 
We don't need this yet. We don't need that yet, but we're going to be using this. And I need one half of my sink empty for this business. I'm going to set this away. All right, now, so as you can see, I hope you can, I've got my sink empty here. I've got my big pan. And I'm going to get me some newspaper kind of material, advertisements, newspaper kind of stuff, which I'm going to line my sink with. So when I'm peeling my potatoes, it's all going in there. And it's so easy when you're done, you just grab it like a package almost, like you're wrapping up a, a side of beef or something. You just wrap it up and throw it in the garbage. So easy to clean up out of your sink, as opposed to these slimy ones saying, come on, get out of there. Okay, so let's get that done. So stuff that usually goes in the garbage. Um, you just sort of lay it down in here. No rhyme or reason. Just sort of get it in there. It comes up on the sides a little bit. And believe me, when I go to take those potato pills out of there, it's so easy. So speaking of potato pills, if you don't have one of these, don't use one of those little paring knife kind of things. I've done that for years. I did that. Uh, you get one of these things. Wow, what a time saver! It's so much safer for not cutting yourself and and not wasting a lot of potato when you're using paring knife. You, you really can't control it just to take the skin off. This is such a this is a Faberware. Faberware, Faberware. And uh, it has a little bit of a pivot because potatoes are sort of round, rounding in shape, like me. And, you know, it just does the job. What we're gonna do is we're going to cut this open. And, and honestly, these are Idaho potatoes, store brand, whatever. Potato is a potato. If it's from Idaho. And unless you're baking. Now, if you're doing some baked potatoes, you want a nice Idaho potato that's like this big. You know, when you're doing a baked potato, these are potatoes that are really good for just other kinds of preparations. So, I may not be using all these, so I don't necessarily want to destroy my bag. Let's see what I need. I may need to keep this bag. I doubt that I'll do all of these potatoes. All right, good. So I'm gonna dump some of these out here. I can go back into the bag if necessary. Let's dump enough out to get us going. Set these back over somewhere. Now, thing to remember, you don't need to wash these off because they're going to get washed off later, and we're peeling them. So take them right out of the bag, your Idaho potatoes, and you peel them. And even at that point, then we're going to put them into this pan, hole. And when we're all done, we're going to wash them off, and then we're going to dice them up. And when I, I, that's the wrong word. Cut them up into about, you know, 
one potato, probably three pieces. That's not dicing, okay? You don't want to dice them small. You, you want them chunked. So chunk this into about three pieces, I'll show you. And uh, once we get them all in here peeled, wash them up, we're gonna do that. And then we'll probably give them a quick rinse again after that, before we go ahead and put them into the pan of water that is over here heating up right now as we speak. We are almost 20 minutes into our baking at 350 degrees for the bell peppers. We're going for an hour, which is puts us a, uh, da -da 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 on the six. And uh, I'm gonna take a peek at them right now and see how is that uh, sauce doing on the bottom of the pan. Um, I'm afraid because I want it to stay soupy and saucy. I'm gonna add some hot water to that probably. Let's take a look. Oh, corrected. Okay. Um, the juices from the developers have brought my level up, or the heat has let everything uh, sort of flow freely throughout the bottom of the pan, so it wasn't as thick, and it's brought my level up nice. So I don't think I want to add any water right now. That's why you want to keep an eye on things. So we still got like you know 30, 35 minutes. So. We'll check it again and see if I think I need to add some water to it. I may not need to at all. I just don't want it to get down thin and thick and start burning. And where's my gravy? Where's my sauce? Oh, well, you should have added some water like 30 minutes ago. I don't want that to happen. So with that said, let's peel. I gotta refresh in this real quick, guys. Like I said, this is cooking and drinking with Cameron. All right, so. Um, once again, potatoes are rounded. This thing has a little pivot, about 25% each side direction. So, and when you're peeling these guys, you can still skim your knuckle with this, even though it's safe, not like a paring knife. You can still cut your neck, uh, cut your knuckle or fingertip or nail or something. So. Get a, get a little bit of a, a flow going and get comfortable with this tool before you start trying to act like Chef Ramsay or something. You know, you're not Chef Ramsay, neither am I. So, and honestly, if you see any ugly parts skim it enough to where it gets rid of it bruises ugly dark pits or whatever skim it away or if it's too much skimming then just take a knife and cut it out you know do some surgery cut out that that black dark maybe a branch was trying to grow out of it who knows so anyway you don't have to get it totally perfect see these little little markings and stuff from the skin and that's still down in there and stuff it's clean it's not contaminated so that's good enough and as you can see this potato peeler it's not taking off very much of the potato just the skin so like I say get yourself one of these guys and honestly if you did this a lot you would get faster at it anyway See, I got a dark spot there, probably a deep bruise. And I just skimmed it away. So you guys can see what the heck I'm doing. And uh, now there are actually people that make mashed potatoes with the skin. They just scrub them, scrub them down really good. But you don't have to get them perfect. A little bit of that skin gets that a really robust kind of flavor when you're making mashed potatoes you know that's not from a, a box you know but um, I don't go for perfect 
I just want to get most of that skin off of there. And a little bit, like I said, it's just going to add to that robust flavor of your mashed potatoes. And, um, and we'll get, like I said, we'll get to that cooking part of it, boiling, cooking, whatever. Uh, we'll get to that down the road here. But that is a way more important than what I'm talking about right here. That is so time sensitive and um, you, you just can't mess up on that. Or you won't have those perfect mashed potatoes like mine. You know, mashed potatoes, you go, go to a restaurant or you go to some potluck or you make them yourself or whatever, but you end up with didn't cook the potatoes long enough or they were cooked long enough, but they didn't really blend them long enough with the mixer. Because some of that stuff you can beat out with the mixer. Um, but if it's undercooked, you'll never beat that out. They're just going to be lumpy potatoes. And in all reality, there's nothing wrong with some, some potatoes that are a little on the lumpy side. Um, they have their own unique uh, flavor and and uh, they're just you know you know they're real they're natural homemade you know? um, and if you get some that are like like uh, you could throw them and they'd stick on the wall like plaster of Paris or something that's probably some potatoes that were overcooked they got really starchy and I'm going to show you how to avoid that situation. And if I can do it, drinking beers, stepping away, and getting distracted, and not overcooking my potatoes, um, you can do it too. And let me tell you, that's a lot of work to make homemade mashed potatoes and end up with some that are like, they're just... You just have to cover them up with gravy or something like that. So now these potatoes actually are pretty fresh. I'll tell you how I know. As you can see the see the green coloration in there underneath what I'm peeling. Those are pretty fresh. So and once again, it's like. That's why there's no set formula for this because it's been when was the potato picked, when was the harvest brought in, and how much time does it need cooking to be just right before you start making your mashed potatoes? You know? All that stuff throws into it. It's not like some recipes where it's real cut and dry, you know. You do this for exactly 15 minutes and you add exactly this and you know, it comes out just like this. Uh, Making mashed potatoes isn't quite like that. I mean, it's not rocket science, so don't get me wrong. But there is a right way and a wrong way to get it to where you have mashed potatoes that absolutely are delicious and people could possibly tell you someday, like I've been told just about every time I've ever had anybody eat my mashed potatoes, those are the best mashed potatoes I've ever had. And I'm not bragging on myself. That happens almost any time, every time I make mashed potatoes, someone's gonna say that. So, you can do it too. Just sort of pay attention. I'm trying to tell you, I probably over talk about something, but I'm not gonna under talk about where this temperature needs to be and what the potato needs to be like before you take it out of the water. Okay, that's your important thing. And there's a few other things I'm going to add about that, too. You know, for example, and we're going to get there, we'll talk about it while I'm doing it, but um, just, I got nothing to do except peel potatoes, I might as well be talking about what I'm going to do, is <clears throat> we're going to use roe butter. Uh, like I said, I already did salt the water slightly, because that way while they're cooking, they're going to be getting some extra flavoring brought into the 
potato before you even start really mixing it. Or, you know, yeah, mixing it. So that's a good thing. Um, going to be using real butter. Hey, and the more the better. If you want to put a whole pack of butter in there and your mashed potatoes are yellow, <laughs> they're going to be delicious. But you don't have to go there. I'm just saying. Don't be afraid to use too much butter. Because butter makes everything better, and especially mashed potatoes. And uh, if you want to use sour cream, which I have, I'm not going to this time. You can use sour cream. It does give it a little bit of the sour cream. Uh, they call it sour cream because it's a little sour. So it will make your mashed potatoes, if you're using just sour cream uh, instead of milk, it will make them a little more on the sour taste side. Not sour like, ugh, you know, but you're going to notice that, hey, there's that was made with sour cream. That's not my all-time favorite. They're good. I've made them like that. Sometimes I've used a little bit of sour cream. I've also used real half and half, um, real whipping cream, the real thick stuff, the expensive stuff. I've used that too. But honestly, I'll tell you, um, the very best, because you don't necessarily want to steal away from the taste of the potato, which gives you your mashed potatoes. Um, these other ingredients sort of just act as the delivery tool to give you that nice, delicious potato flavor and texture. So um, you want to get the right texture and the right flavor. And in my opinion, this is the way my grandmother taught me, use uh, whole milk and real butter. And uh, don't be afraid to use too much butter, but you don't have to make so much butter that they are yellow. Because then it's like you're tasting the butter and not the potato. And the truth could be said of the sour cream or the the whipping cream or half and half. Make it a little bit more on the rich side. So you're getting more of that flavor than you are really the potato flavor, you know. And uh, But uh, one of the key things, if you get all this other stuff that I'm talking about, is just whole milk and butter and uh, the right amount of salt and black pepper. you got to have black pepper in there. Black pepper just... It just, it just that look, and don't overdo it, but just the right amount of black pepper and the right amount of salt, and you've done these other things. It's so basic. That's your perfect mashed potatoes. So we're gonna get there. I'm gonna peek on this again. Yeah, I'm not feeling like I need to add any water to that. Now, one thing I will tell you after looking in there is maybe I should have put that Parmesan cheese underneath or put it on first on top of my bell peppers and then put the sauce because my Parmesan cheese of course it has to stay in there for an hour so it's going to be crunchy the cheese of course burns and there's nothing wrong with the burnt cheese that's a great flavor so it's going to be great but I'm thinking maybe I wish I would have probably put my Parmesan cheese down in there, packed it down in there, and then put my sauce. And um, Okay, we'll see that when it comes out, okay? Now, I'm not having any regrets, because I can smell it. Like I said, burnt cheese, it's like, it's like caviar to me. So my water is looking good. So I'm going to let that sort of, because it won't be too long until I'm done with this. I don't want to have to bring this back up the temperature, but just crack your lid a little bit aside like that so it's not, it doesn't start bubbling your lid off like that. So just crack it over to the side like that, guys. And, um, but I, I'm not going to mess with it because it's right where I need it to be. And uh, we won't be too long until we need to, uh, be using that boiling water for our potatoes.
And for those of you who are just joining us, you are watching Island Reaction. I am Cameron Cooper, your host and your chef. And we're going to do some more potatoes. I might end up doing the whole bag. I rather doubt it, though. The goal, you see me messing around these potatoes. Oh, how many do I need? Well, I want to fill this up enough to where I've got space in there once they're cut up. Because what looks like big here, once I put them into like three cuts each, or two cuts, so we've got three pieces each, then this is going to be basically condensed down and it'll condense down in that pot of water. And uh, so I, I may end up using the whole bag, I don't know. But just in case, I'm doing it like this, take a few more out, etc. You know, if you do this regular, I mean, you just, you would know, but I, it's been a long time since I've made any, okay? But believe me, they're still going to be just as good, even though it's been a while, because this is just something, once you learn this, and you've done it several times the right way, you're just never going to forget it. And, like I said, if, if I didn't work, you know, five and six days a week, um, I wouldn't look so. I wouldn't so look so much at peeling potatoes like work, <laughs> but it's like work for me right now. Um, it's not your favorite thing to do. It's very time consuming. You have to be careful. You're moving your fingers around a lot. Make sure you don't skim, uh, skin a knuckle or something, and making sure you're getting all the bad stuff off of the potato. And whatnot so and believe me you watch this video it's a long video I'm sure it's live <laughs> it's just live right now it's not long it's just live but if you oh are you gonna have a ponytail hi darling Is that your bracelet or your ponytail? No, I got it. My ponytail is long. Well, Mommy, put your ponytail back. She'll make you a ponytail. Just go tell her. Say, <laughs> say ponytail, please. <laughs> yeah. And then you can have a pup 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 ponytail. So, um, it's looking better than it was, I'll tell you that much. But yeah, I, I'm just not a huge fan of peeling potatoes. I know there's probably some people that's their job and they just sit there and all day long they're peeling potatoes. Actually, in the professional, industrial, I should say, industrial scenario, they have some big equipment that's peeling those potatoes. But, you know, I'll tell you that, you know, you see a lot of chefs, you know, there's this old Italian guy that his shows are still on YouTube and stuff uh, he was on TV for years before YouTube even existed you know he had his uh, show and uh, he would always drink some wine while he's cooking and maybe play some music or something and he'd talk and, um, but I have to tell you it's like uh, cooking is much more enjoyable when you're having a an adult beverage, a glass of wine, or whatever, whatever you're you're liking. But uh, you know, because it can be very laborious. 
preparing things in the kitchen. It's very time consuming. There's lots of steps and lots of preparation, lots of cleaning and and all this. So, um, you know, an adult beverage, it makes that, that laborious task so much more enjoyable. And um, not that it's, you know, like I said, if, if this is all I had to do, and don't get me wrong, I'm doing this because I want to. But uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work peeling potatoes. Now, I like the mixing part when you get the mixer out. and zzz. I like that. To me, that's the fun part. I can't wait to get there. But I'm not there yet. But this is the, the not fun part. I'm hating every second of it. I can't wait to get that mixer. In. So... That's why the glass of wine and this and that for a lot of these chefs, you know, because everything's like that. No matter what you're doing, there's one of those tasks that is at hand. Some, somebody may love it and you hate it. And another one you may love and they hate it. But whatever that may be, because there's so many tasks when you're doing food preparation and cooking, chefing, um, there's going to be those things that are just laborious. And it just it makes it fun. That's all I'm saying. So, don't get upset about it. You can still do it. You can still do it. It's laborious. And honestly, with all this time people have on their hands right now, you, know, you can pretty much buy a, a bag of potatoes for what you could buy a box of mashed potato mix. If you got the time... Um, why not make them from scratch? Now I have had some some box mixed mashed potatoes that uh, you, honestly you, you really couldn't even tell that they were from a box. And I forget what the brand was. But um, there are some good ones out there. <clears throat> and honestly, you know, like if you go to like Church's Fried Chicken or uh, KFC, you know, I love their mashed potatoes and gravy, but you know, if it was just their potatoes, I wouldn't be impressed. But their gravy is so delicious that it makes the mashed potatoes and gravy combo just work perfect, you know. Um, but they have really delicious gravy. Both of them are really good. And Jollibee has good uh, gravy. They don't have mashed potatoes, but they have gravy. Um, and you can you can dip your chicken, Jollibee chicken, into the gravy. It's really good. They have they serve rice instead of potatoes. It's a Philippine restaurant, Jollibee. Hey, we can do a plug for Jollibee, right? Here's our souvenir cup from Jollibee. Philippine restaurant. That's their little jelly bean mascot there. All right, so we're getting about there, and I'm thinking that's still not quite enough. We'll see. I'll finish these three and see what that looks like, and that may be enough. I don't know that I need to do all of those. Might end up being too much. But I'm going to say that if you're going to make mashed potatoes from scratch, you know, you pretty much want to do, I think that's a 10 pound bag. You pretty much, I, I, what does it say? Yeah, 10 pounds. If you're going to bother to do all this work, you better do at least 10 pounds. And I'm doing pretty, if I don't do the whole 10 pounds, I'm doing pretty close. You pretty much want to buy a 10-pound bag of potatoes. If you're going to do all this work, you don't want to do all this work for, you know, enough mashed potatoes for dinner tonight. You want some leftovers. You have to stick them in the freezer, which that will probably never happen because they're so good if you do them like this. But it's a lot of work. 
So make it worth your while and make enough to where you have leftovers, enough to give away or put in the freezer or whatever, because it's, it's, it's a laborious task. But like I said, you'll never get a better serving of mashed potatoes than this right here. In my opinion. And I've done it a few times. I've done it a few times. Now there are some meals you can prepare that, you know, you just get enough ingredients to make your dinner that night and you know it's it's not that laborious and you don't have to worry about leftovers and you didn't have to spend a bunch of money, but you have a nice fresh dinner and you know, this is just not one of those items. Uh, or for that matter, the bell peppers, the stuffed bell peppers, that's laborious in itself. It's not something you just throw together as you see. Um, so make enough to where you at least have some leftovers so you can enjoy it again because it's a lot of work. And uh, I want to peel so many potatoes that when I start putting, putting them in my pot of boiling water that now, I, I will probably have to drain out some of that water so that it doesn't overflow, but that's that's always something you do. But start with a full pot so you've got plenty and you can just drain off what you don't need. And if you ever need to add water later, you certainly can. Okay, so I think that's it. I don't think I need to do more than that. That's going to make plenty of mashed potatoes. We'll save these for whatever. You never, never I can make french fries with them or tater tots or uh, hash browns. All right, now like I was saying, put that in there like that. Now that that's done, now I've, I've peeled these potatoes and I, if you can see this, I'm gonna, I just reach down in here, it's almost like I'm, I'm wrapping a, a slab of meat at the butcher shop. Like they, they used to always use newspaper, you know. There's all those potato pills. My sink is clean. I'll do a rinse and all that sanitizing and stuff, but how easy is that? So always save a little bit of, you know, paper for that. Now, with that in mind, we're gonna go ahead and wash these things and I'm just gonna wash them with some cold water. And then I'm gonna get my cutting board. I've got my knife, which is still clean. I use the uh, vegetables on that. Bell peppers, actually, it was. I'm gonna get my cutting board, which is right here. And still clean, just rinse it off. I was cutting onions and garlic on that. No meat. So, you know, some things when you're, you're working in the kitchen and you're doing some prepping and stuff like that, you know, you don't have to overdo dirtying on dishes sometimes if you if you plan ahead and you know what your what your steps are in your process is that I've only had vegetables on this onions and garlic I rinse it off I'm gonna cut some potatoes on it it didn't have any meat on it and um, and even if it had some cooked meat on it which was 100% cooked still wouldn't have been an issue just rinse it off so there's some steps you could take that are sanitary practical and time-saving in the kitchen especially you know we have a pretty small kitchen here um, so we've learned some of the little steps that you can do to not uh, well I got to get into the cutting board oh I got to wash it no just be smart about it and safe about it that's all now we're gonna like I said continue washing these guys off like so rinse them off really good Okay, and drain that. All right, so now my my clean my clean towel here. I'm just gonna put my potatoes up there. And all right, we're getting close. I'm gonna just take a peek on the 
the stuffed bell peppers inside the oven, baking at 350 degrees for one hour. It's been almost one hour. And I'm going to take a peek at it to make sure that my sauce doesn't need to have add some water. Which, realistically, you could add some water after you took it out of the oven and make it a little saucier if you needed to. I just want to take a look at it before I'm all the way done cooking. Let's take a peek. All right, that's bubbling and smelling really good. My cheese is totally crispy on the on the top. So um, I think that's done. So I'm going to go ahead and kill my oven. I'm going to kill the oven. I am going to get these out of the oven and set over where they can be cooling safely. And always be careful guys when you're reaching into the oven, using your pot holders, making sure you turn the oven off, making sure you don't spill and drip hot juices on yourself. All right, well I failed to show you that I'm gonna bring that back here to give you a close up on that, hang on. So as you can see, uh, cheese that always, especially uh, Parmesan or Asiago cheese shredded like that, it will get black and crunchy on the top. That's fine. It's got a lot of good flavor. And you can see the level of my juices that came out of the bell peppers has made my sauce really nice and saucy. It's bubbling and marinating. So we're just going to let this cool. And when it's cool, it's going to be ready to plate with our mashed potatoes, which we're going to start working on right now. So before I start, these have been washed. Uh, I'm just gonna do another quick rinse on my pan here. So now I'm gonna be cutting these into about three pieces each, give or take. Uh, you just want a bunch of small pieces because the problem with small pieces, if you cut these too small, like you were to slice them in like cucumber sizes or something like that, if you did that, they're gonna overcook and get real starchy in your hot water. So, and if you don't cut them, then it's gonna take a long time for them to cook all the way through. And the outsides will get uh, starchy and the insides cooking better. So you gotta cut them into about three pieces for this normal potato size. And that way they'll cook evenly throughout and you can take them off at the right time. I'll be right back. Okay, and for anybody just uh, checking in, uh, you are watching Island Reaction. I am Cameron Cooper. I'm your host and chef for today's live stream. 
and um, we are preparing uh, stuffed bell peppers with mashed potatoes and uh, our sauce gravy that's in the mashed in, within the uh, stuffed bell pepper. Uh, <laughs> in the same pan. We're making our gravy at the same time we're baking our stuffed bell pepper, so it's sort of a a win-win right there. So uh, if you have not uh, subscribed, please uh, click and subscribe and like our channel and give us a thumbs up. I uh, appreciate you being here. I'm just doing some unplanned, unannounced kind of uh, live stream here. Uh, not working today and wanted to share some of this with you guys. Maybe you're trapped at home and want to do some surfing around and watch something. Uh, we're getting ready to uh, continue on with the mashed potatoes and uh, I'm going to take a momentary break and we'll get right into the uh, next preparation step to cut these potatoes up so we can put them in the hot water and then we're going to be watching them closely because that's where the real crucial crux part of the process is is once they go into the hot water you don't want to overcook them you don't want to undercook them so I'll show you how you figure that out to the perfect point. It's all an observation.
Guys, thanks for your patience. I am Cameron Cooper. You're watching Island Reaction. Uh, uh, thanks for uh, staying with us, for those that you did, and for those of you that did. And 
here, here's to you, PJ, and uh, PJ's Cocktails, number 34, Peyton Manning. Cheers. We are going to get ready. We are going to get ready to quarter these up, so to speak, get them in the pan, rinse them again, get them into our boiling water, which we let it, letting it maintain its temperature. We're going to do a quick hand wash here. And, uh, <coughs> hi, honey. Hi, <coughs> Well, I am, uh, I'm making some potatoes, honey. I'm going to make some potatoes. Dry my hands with my cheap-ass paper towels. And, uh, all right, let's quarter these things up. And we got to get the mixer ready. So, we need this. And we need this. All right, get that thing ready. And I got a lot of splaining to do. Okay, I got a lot of splaining to do, Lucy. Uh, we're gonna get this thing ready to go because as soon as we get these things cooked, we're going to be kneading it ready. Alright, so I am going to cut up the potatoes and get ready to make mashed potatoes. Alright, so um, hopefully if you guys can still see the, uh, I don't know my angle on this, but anyway, I'm just going to go about like so. So I basically, I've cut my potato like this into the big pan, okay? You really don't need to cut them any smaller than that because like I said, if you cut them smaller than that, this is important. Um, you're gonna overcook your potatoes too fast and get them starchy, it makes terrible mashed potatoes. So, I'm just gonna, depending on the size of potato, you want chunks about like so. And for most potatoes, it ends up being about three pieces for one potato, as a rule. If they get one of those sort of uh, oblong kind of potatoes, then it might end up with four pieces. But as a rule, that looks like a little big. I'm going to cut that one. So you just want chunks, not little uh, cucumber slices. Most important thing. So that was four pieces there. But see, they're chunks. going to get this rinsed off real quick after this get it in the water and <clears throat> you're probably looking at about I would say maybe 10 minutes just to give you some kind of an idea because you're you keep wondering well how long is he going to cook them well it's going to be about 10 minutes but it's not so much the 10 minutes as it is checking them frequent checking them frequently you're going to use a fork and you're going to do a little flake test. If, if a potato can flake in the water, when you just spear the fork in there slightly, it spears, you don't want it flaking apart and floating around on the top of the water. You've overcooked it. So you want to be checking these chunks periodically to get just the right feel to where it, it starts to, it goes into the potato breaks it apart easily but not too easy you don't want to you want it you don't want it disintegrating you don't want it to disintegrate see this is a three piece right there and and I'm going to show you let's hope after all this talking that I don't overcook them after all my smart talk. <laughs> that was three pieces. And these, you know, there's, there's, nothing's exact, but this one was four pieces. You just want chunks, not slivers. Okay, so, with that in mind, we're going to rinse these potatoes. I 
I'm probably going to have to dump a little bit of water out of the boiling pot of water because once I start adding these potatoes, it's going to bring my water level up and you don't want it overflowing and burning and sizzling and all that business. So you just want to uh, have enough. I say you can add a little bit of water if you need to, but better to just take the water out. All right, so dump most of that out. Now, yeah, I'm gonna have to take some water out of there. So let's dump some of that out. And thanks everybody for watching here or watching Island Reaction. And uh, thanks everybody for watching. I'm gonna dump some of that out. I know that's too much and uh, I'm gonna go, it's about half full because once I put all those potatoes in there, if they all fit, um, it's gonna bring my water level up. So, I'm gonna start dumping those in there. Don't splash the hot water on your hands and burn yourself. You could use tongs or what have you. And like I say, if I have to add this slight bit of water, it's going to heat up fast because it won't be much. But I may not have to add any water. Okay, it's getting pretty full. Getting pretty full. Now, if the very, very top layer of these potatoes is not covered with water so that your level's not too high and boiling over, it's okay. That just worked out perfect. So, um, I am going to have to take a little bit out of there. Still just a little bit too much. Because that's going to be boiling over pretty, pretty quick. So we're going to take a little bit out of there. Alright, so I don't know if you can see that if I rock that like that. I've got, um, I've got about an inch from the water level to the very top of this ridge. So when, once it starts to heat back up again and start to bubble or boil, um, it could possibly, if you, especially if you have a lid, um, it could start boiling over, sizzling a lot down the side. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put this there on there now, uh, sealed good for now till it reaches back to its temp, because now the cool potatoes not cold they weren't in the refrigerator just normal room temperature potatoes which are cool um, they they cool down the the water temperature of my boiling pan of water pot of water and uh, so I'm gonna put the lid on there good now and when I see the lid start to start bubbling off a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and cock it sideways like that lets the pressure out of there and uh, continue to let them cook Periodically, periodically, I'm going to be uh, moving them around slightly. You know, I'll probably use this uh, wooden spoon and just go down to the bottom and start, try to get some of the bottom potatoes up to towards the top and just rotate them slightly, not stirring, just rotate them up a little bit um, so we can keep that that heat from the lower bottom of the of the pot more consistent through the potatoes so um, and just take, take a look right there we're on the tin I just put them into the boiling water now my temperature dropped it's on the tin um, I'm realistically gonna say I'm probably pretty safe to let this go all the way to the 12 which is gonna be 10 minutes like that probably by the time it hits the 12 it's gonna start you're going to see some bubbling again because it's reaching back to its a boiling temperature. And uh, at that point then, and I don't really have to touch it until then. So I've got 10 minutes right now um, that I don't have to be too conscious of really just looking at it. I'll let you know when it's time to work. And we got to watch it a little closer and maybe a little more often because we're going to do our, and we'll get our fork out. 
we're going to be doing a fork test just like when you're baking and you put a knife or a fork down into the cake mix or the cake that's baking and it's like oh there's still some batter on there wet batter okay, it's not done yet okay. um, something like that for less for, for, for lack of a better example you're going to be using a fork test to check the solidness of the potato. You don't want it to get starchy and overcooked. You just want it to be able to break apart literally like my fork goes into a potato and, and it'll it'll like crack it into like that. You sort of want it to almost right there. You don't want it to be like it sticks and you pull out the potato. No, it's not done. But you don't want it to stick it into potato and the whole thing just falls apart and disintegrates you don't want it there so there's just that little pocket of time there that you got to find where okay that's what i wanted take it off of the heat get it in some cold water and cool those potatoes down they're still going to be hot enough to make your mix and add your butter and your milk um but you got to cool them down enough to where it stops that cooking process because you don't want them to go to starch Sure, what would you like, Ernie? Okay, hang on there. Excuse me, please. popping back in here I'm gonna get baby some Pepsi um, you want the blue one okay I'll get you the blue of oh, the green one okay so I'll be checking back with you I'm gonna be busy here for just a second but um, like I said what we want is about 10 minutes to start with to get this back up to temp boiling to where I have to move my, my uh, lid up across like that yeah, okay, let's get the green one. So, hello to everybody out there, and thanks for watching our channel. Hello to, I think, uh, Cecil told me uh, Charles was in, in the mix, and PJ, and hello to you guys, and Charles, and LJ, and PJ, and everybody watching. And, and mom and dad, I don't know if you're watching or not. They no, it's not the green bottle. It's not the green bottle. It's the green bottle. Well, this is all I've got, honey. I'm sorry. This is all I've got. And I don't even know. Oh, the lid may be in here. Yeah. Yeah, this is all I've got, sweetie. It has to be this one. And I'll get you a straw. Okay. And there you can have some baby Pepsi. There you go, sweetie. Don't spill it, please. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, thanks, everybody, for watching here at Island Reaction. And uh, so this was sort of unplanned, not real organized, and um, certainly didn't dress for the occasion. My redneck jaws, tank top, and uh, beer belly. But we're doing the video, and... Um, the live stream, I should say. Soon to be a video, near future. So, um, yeah, so, uh, and, and like I said, I don't know where we're at. Well, I gotta get these potatoes done. I've got the mixer ready. Uh, I'm not gonna get the butter out. Well, actually, I'm gonna get the butter out so we can soften up. Um, Now, as you can see, I don't know uh, the size to tell you what size pot this is, but basically you're knowing it's, it's pretty close to a 10 pound bag of potatoes. Um, I would say I've got about five or six potatoes left in the 10 pound bag. Um, 
So they wouldn't all fit in this pot, but you need to buy a 10 pound bag. Uh, I am gonna use one stick of butter. Now, if you wanna use half a stick for health concerns or whatnot, it's delicious with one stick. It doesn't turn it yellow. It's not over, over buttery. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set that right there so it can soften up. Um, just so it doesn't cool down my potatoes too much when I put it in. It's ice cold. I want it to be able to get in the mix right away. My milk is already ready to go. And as far as how much milk, that's something we'll explain when we get to that mixing part. Um, how much milk, it's really you eyeball it, you, you mix it, you feel for it, you're looking for a certain consistency, and um, the butter doesn't matter. Use a stick or use a half a stick, your choice. Uh, the salt is something that I'll add a little bit of salt and I'm going to take a spoon and or a fork and I'm going to let my wife taste it and see because she's good to know is oh that's too salty or it needs a little bit more. Uh, well I don't want her to say oh that's too salty because by that point it's too late. Um, but I want to add enough salt to where she says oh maybe a little bit more. Oh no that's perfect. And then the pepper. I know how to do the pepper. You don't want to just like black because you put so much pepper in it but you want to put enough to where it gives a nice uh, flavor. You want to be able to actually when you eat the, 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 the bite of mashed potatoes, you can actually taste the pepper, um, but not over overpowering, but enough to where every bite you take, you, you do get to taste the pepper. So you want to put enough black pepper in there. Um, what else? Uh, the gravy will do a different, a different video as far as if you were, like if I was making some fried chicken and my same mashed potatoes, but then you're going to want some gravy, then I'd be using my my uh, my fried chicken uh, grease and droppings and things like that to make my homemade gravy from scratch. And that's another time, another video. Um, I won't do another mashed potato video, even though they may get made again. I, I won't make another video about it. Um, that just makes the process even slower, trying to do a video and explain everything. Uh, and I'm not complaining. I'm glad to be able to do it for you guys. I'm glad you're watching. Um, I'm just saying it's a lot of work, so be prepared if you're going to make these mashed potatoes. Um, it is laborious, and if you had a helper, that can cut the cut the process down quite a bit. Also, if you have more than one helper, that's even better. Um, <clears throat> peeling potatoes is the most laborious part, um, and then you have to wait for them to cook, and you have to be watching it, and making sure they're not overdone. Uh, that's another part. So, with that in mind, um, I'm going to bring in the bell peppers to let you guys see. They have cooled down a little bit. They're not bubbling anymore. Uh, as you can see, the uh, shredded Parmesan cheese on the top is just crispy burnt. I'm okay with that. I didn't intentionally plan it that way, but it's like that on pizza or anything else. If you have burnt Parmesan cheese, that's a delicacy, okay? So, let me get that... Hi brought back in here so you guys can take another peek at that and hang on yes darling oh. all right so here it is it's still hot but you can see um, our our pan has plenty of sauce in there um, for our mashed potatoes as our sauce gravy and uh, if we wanted to add a little bit of water, if it started getting low, thin it out a little bit, make some extra gravy, we could do that. Put some cornstarch in some water and you know, thicken it up. You've got plenty of juices and flavor in there, intensity. So if you wanted to add a little bit more and use what you've got to make a little bit extra, since you're using it as a gravy on potatoes, depending on how much you like on your mashed potatoes, which I like a lot, you could uh, use this to make a little extra if you wanted. All right, so that's actually outside cooling still. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover that with some foil just to protect it while it's cooling down. Okay, okay that was too little, so I'll save that for something else. Save it for a rainy day. Let's get another one.
Okay, here we go. So it's cooled down enough that I got some foil on it protecting it outside from any elements or critters. And um, so there, now let's take a look. I said on the 12 it might be ready to take a peek and still not up to 10. Make sure my water is high. Okay, yeah that's high. Alright, well I'll keep an eye on it. It probably needs another 5 minutes until it starts to boil. And then once it starts boiling, I'm, I'm going to let it boil for a little while. I'm just going to crack the lid so it doesn't boil over. And I'm going to let it boil probably for um, probably another five minutes. And then I will, uh, five to ten minutes, I'll take a look at it. As long as my potatoes are still nice and firm, um, I'm going to just let it go. But once I see a little bit of uh, softness to my potatoes, not to where I want them to be, but just it's demonstrating a little bit of softness, showing that they're starting to feel that heat, then I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to move them. I'm not stirring. I'm going to move them a little bit in that pan, get some of the bottom up to the top, etc. So that's uh, that's what we're looking at. It's a little bit of a process. Like I said, this is laborious. You don't just stick it on the on the stove. Put the lid on it, uh, come back, okay, they're done. You know, it do not work like that unless you want, you know, a degraded kind of mashed potato. But if you want my mashed potatoes, which, like I said, they, they are really world class, in my opinion. Um, just follow closely what I'm telling you about this because you will not be disappointed if you follow what I'm telling you about all this other stuff, all these. Steps are important. Not as important as this step right here, right now. Okay, you know, uh, certainly don't cut your potatoes into too small of pieces. Yeah, they're gonna cook faster, so you're saving some time, but it's gonna make what you're looking for a lot more difficult to to hone in on. So just follow what I'm saying. All this other stuff was not that critical. You know, how fast did you peel the potatoes and? Did you rinse them here or rinse them there? And all these other, you know, mechanics of this process are important, but they're not critical. Um, but this part right here, this is the critical part. Once they go into that hot, hot water, this is the critical part. This is where you need to be watching and knowing what you're doing. If you don't, go back home. Or you're already doing this at home, so that didn't make sense. So, um, if you don't know what you're doing, watch the video again. <laughs> Thanks. I am Kevin Cooper watching Island Reaction. We are making uh, stuffed bell peppers and mashed potatoes and uh, this unexpected live stream here. And uh, it's going really well. Um, our, our bell peppers did get the Parmesan cheese on the top a little crispier than I wanted. It is burnt, uh, but it is just the top of the cheese. And um, but. Burnt Parmesan cheese is excellent, so I don't see that as being an issue. It's not like the crust of burnt toast. And some people like that, but uh, most people probably don't. So uh, it's not like that. Burnt, uh, burnt crispy uh, Parmesan cheese is it's just excellent. It's like a it's like eating a, a snack, you know. So bear with me just a moment. I gotta see what I need to do. I need to take a quick break. Be right back here at Island Reaction. Okay, so 
I'm actually going to plate up um, uh, some of this uh, stuffed bell peppers for my wife. She's getting hungry. And uh, so I'm going to get some of this ready for her. Um, we're not necessarily going to show you. Um, but when I when I get the potatoes done and they're mixed and everything like that, we are going to put a plate together so you can see the stuffed bell peppers with the uh, mashed potatoes with the, the sauce gravy on the potatoes. Um, and, uh, and we're going to show you that uh, presentation like that. Right now, bear with me. I'm just going to get, she's getting hungry. We're going to get her some of the stuffed bell pepper and we're going to get some feedback on um, what she thinks. Stay tuned. Bear with me, guys. We are going to fix them. Looking good, guys. Looking really good. Okay, so my water started to boil the top of the lid off. So I am going to take a quick peek. Nothing too serious. Very solid, very firm. Okay. I'm not ready to really move them and adjust them inside the pot yet. But I don't want my lid boiling off. It's losing all my water that way. So I'm just going to move it aside like that. And I'm probably going to let that do another five minutes. I'll check it. And uh, before I have to, actually, like I said, I'm going to move them in the pan. Not stir them, just move the, like, the bottom up to the top kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to let it have five minutes. So I'm going to go probably to the three. I'm going to check them with the fork again. And, and I'm going to move them. And we'll see where they're at. And the most important thing, that the, the key thing to notice... Um, I'm going to make sure I show you that, hey, this is the thing you're looking for. So you're going to know what to look for. Regardless of really how you get there, through all, all these steps I've showed you, I'm going to show you the key most important thing to look for when you go to that potato. And it is important after you get to that point, oh, that's what he said. Get them off the heat, get them into some cold water, and stop the process. Then you're, you're safe. And then, like I said, all the rest of these steps, you know, you could, you know, fudge on them here and there and stuff. But this key thing, that's what you're looking for. Well, we're not there yet. Excuse me, darling. wife have her a nice little plate here and she's not going to have the potatoes so she's going to enjoy this I, I will get some feedback and let you guys know what she thinks about that flavor Okay guys, so she gave me a thumbs up on that. 
Like I said, she's not having the potatoes, but she does like potatoes, but she was just too hungry to wait for the potatoes, and I don't blame her. This has been a long process. I don't know what time I started this, but um, it was really intended for dinner, which is it's really several hours from now, but she got hungry, and uh, why not have this instead of making something else? Um, Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move these a little bit, not much, because you don't want to, you know, over, overflow the pan or pop them out, and burn yourself and all this kind of stuff, but I'm going to go ahead, so you guys get out of the way so you can see. I'm just sort of going down at the bottom and moving them a little bit, real slow and methodic like this, like so. Now I can smell those potatoes and just for the smell of those potatoes I knew they were a new harvest I showed you this the peeling on them how they were green I can smell that freshness of them as well so let's see where we're at with this one here okay so one of the one of the pieces that came up from the bottom it actually did do the brake test the way I like it. So it is getting close, closer. But I still have plenty of pieces because I've just moved it. I have plenty of pieces that at this point, if I took it off, it would be undercooked. So that's why I moved them to try to get that balance out. If some pieces are a little on the starchy side and others are not, that, that's okay. Um, you don't want them all chunky or uh, like lumpy potatoes and you don't want them all starchy like thick potatoes so um, we're gonna keep it it's getting close but I'll show you that break test and I'll actually uh, probably maybe put one on a plate get it up close so you can see what I'm talking about on this break test uh, for softness but not starchiness and, uh, and you know, basically, anybody knows, you stick something into a potato, it feels hard, you know that. But as far as showing you that, when is that perfect breakaway point, that's what I want you guys to hone in on. So don't forget, I'll be right back here. And honestly, I gotta say too, guys, um, if you did, if you were to have end up with some lumpy potatoes because you had a little bit of solid chunks that didn't get heat consistency throughout all of them, you know what? There's nothing wrong with lumpy potatoes. I don't know who ever made that rule. Like, I think anytime I've ever had lumpy potatoes, I think they're great. So I'm getting excited. Um, I gotta tell you, I'm getting excited because I'm getting ready to, I'm getting ready to get this son of a bitch going and this makes me excited. This is the fun part. That's like riding the motorcycle right there. After you've been peeling potatoes, that's like riding the motorcycle. So I, I'm looking forward to that. Now, just have to look, wait just a little bit longer. It's so close. It is so close. So I'm going to go ahead and get this pan out of my way because I'm going to need this side. And I'm actually going to need that big spoon also. Alright, so that can stay right there. I'll need that. Um, this. Uh, oh, I need that. 
and I need that. I don't need the knife anymore. And I'm going to need that pan out of my way. That can be my uh, like pot holder for the countertop. All right, let me take another peek. Not quite where I want it. I still have some that are relatively solid. So now is when I, I might move them a little bit more so that my heat can get more consistent on some of these. But let me tell you something. This is one thing I remember. If you start using your spatula to move these and they're all breaking apart, you've overdone it. So, like I said, this is, the, this is really the crucial part here is to... Now, I see my water is starting to get sort of milky colored. So it is getting... A, I could take my lid off now for that part. Um, my water is starting to get sort of milky colored, so I can see that that's, that's showing the starch coming out of the potato. So it's getting close. And, uh, but like I said, I did have some that were, they were more solid than I want. I'm trying not to have lumpy potatoes is my goal. But like I said, if you have a little bit of lumps, that's okay. Better to have a little bit of lumps in your potato than all starchy potatoes. Okay? This is when you really want to start paying attention. That one's good. That one's good. Okay, I'm liking what I'm feeling. So let me get this up here real quick. Hang on. Oh, I'm just going to put it on a plate to show you real quick. So I'm going to take one of these out. Okay, the pan's too heavy and dangerous to bring over here. So there it is. Now I put the fork in it. It just went right through it, almost like butter. But it's not falling apart, okay? So now, that's what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna get my cold water ready and running. I need those pot holders. Okay, you can turn that heat off for now. And I am going to, I'm gonna let the, the I'm gonna be draining it. I don't think you can see right down in here, but I'm gonna be draining it and letting the cold water run into it. So I'm sort of like recycling the water to cool these down a little bit. Because that's what I'm after is not... I want to get that starchy water out of there also. So my water is clear. So I'm just lifting up the pan on the edges. It's still hot on the handle. Um, letting that cold water run in there. Because like I say, once I cool this down to where they're, they're basically stopped cooking, it doesn't mean they've lost their heat for my finishing process and, and mixing. But I want to cool them down to stop the cooking. And that's, that's true of a lot of things that when you're baking or cooking or whatever, you have to remember that just because you take something off the stove, it doesn't mean it's not continuing to cook. So, if you've already overdone it on top of the stove, you take it off, you may have gone too far on a lot of things. And some things it doesn't matter. But this is one that you, you really don't want to mess with. All right, hopefully that handle is hot, cool a little bit. All right, so, so now, see all my potatoes are still intact. They're not like breaking apart. Um, I've stirred them. I have rinsed them, and you don't see a lot, like a lot of little uh, floaty partitions. Now, when I, I dump that water now, it's cool water on my hand. But that potato inside is still hot. So what I'm going to do now is uh, drain the rest of this water out with the lid and, uh, and get ready to transfer them into my pot. 
my pan, I should say. All right. So I'm gonna, in this sense, because I do have cool water in my pan, I am gonna use my lid as opposed to dumping uh, dumping them in that strainer. Those those things are a pain in the ass to clean. So I'm just using my lid to strain because it's not hot. A lot of people will take their potatoes off of the boiling water stove and dump them into one of those strainers things and then go to making them. Well, I guarantee you they're coming up with some starchy potatoes because they never took the next step, which was to, number one, make sure they're perfect before you take them off and then cool them down immediately. And there's something, there's a lot of things that you have to really cool down. So, so these are are, if I can show you again here, take another piece out. I'll take this one off. Um, and you see, I'm just going to stick it barely in there. This one was a little more solid than but it broke apart really nice. It's not, it's not falling apart. That's what I don't want. So enough of that. Let's get these in here transferred so we can start doing some of that mixing. All right. Now, oh, there we go. Now, whoops. And I'm going to rinse this thing off a little bit. Now, I'm going to be using that pan to put my potatoes in initially. You really don't have room in the refrigerator to put this big pot of potatoes, so I'm going to be uh, transferring there, and then I'm going to be finding some uh, other containers that we can uh, put them in to utilize space. All right? So we're getting ready to do some fun stuff now. But i got to have a quick break. Oh yeah, this was the fun part. So, those are there. My butter's already been softened. I took it, took it out of the refrigerator probably 20 minutes ago. So it's nice and soft. Makes my job mixing so much easier. And um, let's see. I don't guess I need that one right now. That's just sort of in the way. Might come in handy again here. Take that out of my way. I don't need that really again. I was going to go down there. All right, so let that do there. Okay. Um. Oh, did you enjoy that? Yeah. Is it going to get a thumbs up? Okay. There's the empty plate, and it got a thumbs up. So that's for my wife, and she's the real chef. So if she says thumbs up and she finished your plate, I did a good job. All right, so that's there. Now, where's my black pepper? I can use some real black pepper. Um, it's okay to use either one. We have this thing. I got that for something. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and put some fresh ground black pepper in there. And uh, once I get it mixing a little bit, I might probably hit this again because you do want to have enough uh, pepper to where, like I said, you can actually taste the pepper when you take a bite of your uh, potatoes. So that's enough for now. And um, now one thing you want to do is, uh, and I'm going to do this before I get the milk out, okay? Oh, let's let's put a little bit of salt in there, but not much, because like I said, you can always add salt, but you can't take it out. You'd have to make a new batch of, smaller new batch of potatoes, mix them with these to bring the saltiness down if you overdid it. So don't go that way. I've actually done that. 
So I'm gonna go like that and let the wife taste because uh, she's just more she's more exact on if something is a little bit too salty. Uh, better than me. I probably uh, cover up a lot of my senses with uh, cigarettes and beer and coffee and Red Bulls and stuff like that. So and Copenhagen, Wintergreen Lunka. Um, you know, uh, you're, my tongue's not as palatable as her. So she, if she says this is just perfect on the salt, I'm going to go with her. So I put a little bit in there. And the next step is I'm going to go ahead and so sort of smash them a little bit before I put the, the milk in there. So that's not sloshing around. And uh, getting close, guys. Alright, so I can get my milk out because I'm going to need it. Yes. Yes, I'm going to need it. Alright, so you're going to use not that skim milk, not that 2%, not half and half, not whipping cream, not sour cream. You're just going to use some whole milk. Okay, that's really the very best. Well, PJ, I think I put the wrong one in the wrong one. Let's see, this one maybe goes here. Rinse that thing off. Um, maybe this one goes here. See, there's like a, a right side and a left side of one of these things. Okay. So, I'm just going to use this. Uh, PJ, the, the reason I have so many taters is, like I said, early early on in the video or early on in the live stream you were busy mixing a cocktail or something uh, you missed that part but if this is such a laborious task to make mashed potatoes that if you're gonna make mashed potatoes you need to at least buy yourself a 10 pound bag because that's a lot of work and it's, it's the same amount of work for let's say two pounds of potatoes as it is for 10 pounds of potatoes and you can stick them in the freezer. That's something that freezes really well. Um, they go with almost any dinner that you could, you know, I mean, maybe besides pizza, but, uh, you know, fried chicken or pork chops or um, turkey. Well, you know, mashed potatoes, go with meatloaf. There's very few things that you really couldn't, you know, have potatoes on your plate as a side. And, uh, and then you choose the you choose the gravy or the sauce or whatever you want to go with it. But, um, and I, I think the same is true of cottage cheese, which has nothing to do with this. But um, cottage cheese is just one of those sides that you can go with just about any plate of dinner that you have. Uh, mashed potatoes is another one of those. So um, that's why so many potatoes is because it's just so laborious. It's like if I'm if I'm doing all this work, I'm making ten pounds or pretty damn close. Thanks for your question. All right, so back to this, like I said, I'm not adding the milk yet, but I'm just gonna use my, my mixer forks or whatever you call them. I'm just gonna be going like this around in it, just to uniformly break them up a little bit. And this is another thing, if you had these things that were uncooked, they, I mean, they were still too hard, you didn't cook them enough, um, you wouldn't really be able to do this. So I'm sort of like mashing the potatoes with the mixer so that when I start turning it on, I have a little better control of what's going on inside this mixing bowl. I'm sort of just prepping it for the mixing. That's all. And before I add the milk. So they're, I'm feeling a lot of consistency with the, with the firmness of these potatoes. They're just right. They really are. 
um, flaky, I would say. If this was a baked potato, it would be the perfect baked potato. It's just that way. That flakiness of a baked potato that's cooked just right. That's what you're trying to obtain when you're cooking them in the boiling them in the water. Is that same kind of consistency, flakiness that you get in a baked potato. So Alright, so that's enough of that business. Now I'm gonna add some milk and I'm gonna do little bits at a time. Um, and I'll explain it as I go because it's hard to explain unless I'm actually doing it. Of course, with the mixer, you may not be able to hear me, so I have to, may have to turn it off to make my point. So I'm not going to turn the mixer on now because I haven't added any milk. And as a rule, unless you bought, this is a KitchenAid here. Unless you've got a really high-end industrial type, um, it would be a lot of wear on your mixer motor if you were doing it without adding any milk. But you need to add the milk anyway, so. Make it easy on your blender, I mean mixer. And I don't know if you guys saw that. So I didn't overdo it, but I put in, because I've done this enough, I knew that that was either just perfect or I'll have to add a little bit. But don't just dump a whole bunch of milk in there and then it's like, oh, I've got runny potatoes. Might as well be called gravy instead of mashed potatoes. All right, so let's turn this on. I'm gonna go on high. And I'm just gonna fill it out. Yeah, so I, I will be adding some more milk, but not yet. I need to get this all, I'm going to be moving this mixer bowl around. You don't want to be throwing this up on your ceiling and your walls, or somebody's face. So, don't worry, it'll get there. This is something that it does take a little bit of this. If you really want your potatoes to be sort of whipped, get ready for some, some mixing. Because this, this is one of the key things right here, beyond you know getting the potato just perfect, is you want to get in there and just take your time. You may be mixing this thing when you think, I'm never going to be done. But what you're looking for, the color will start changing. It'll get a real brilliant white. And you'll just be able to see it. It's like, oh, that's looking good. I'm making mashed potatoes. All right, so I've got that center area of my pan looking pretty good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some plunging and stuff like that manually without the power on to get my, my outside perimeter potatoes more toward the center so I can do some mixing. Point, I'm just pushing it down toward the center. At this point, one of these round stainless steel pans is just, I, I, if you guys can see this, my, my blender thing keeps falling out. Cheap ass thing. I probably don't have it the right side, but I thought I didn't. It fell out the last time. Let me mixing bowls like this stainless steel god it is good for so many things so i'm just pushing this stuff it's falling again push it really good please 
I didn't touch the black. That's making it pop out, I know, but. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's done. It's not hurting. So, anyway, so I'm just pushing this stuff down toward the center. Now let's do some more blending. Break up all those chunks. And yeah, I'm slinging a little bit on the wall. Try not to, but it happens. Actually, I'm going to take a, just a momentary break here because my, my arm actually is cramping a little bit because um, where's my towel at? Oh, because it's stiff. Potatoes are stiff, and um, uh, yeah, I think I'm. I'll get it back out if I need to. I don't. I don't want to use any more milk if I don't have to. So I didn't overdo it on the milk. I might add a little bit more if I think it's still a little on the thicker side than I want. But um, what it really needs, before you add the milk, before you make that decision to add more milk, you want to mix this thing really good. I mean, your arm's going to get tired like mine, unless you have one of those nice ones that comes down and you just spin the bowl around or whatever. But um, It takes some mixing. And you, you want them basically... You want your potatoes not runny. And for lack of a better uh, example, if you like took a spoonful of them and flung it at the wall, would it stick to the wall? That's sort of where you want it to be. You want it to sort of stick to the wall. Now, I, I know I used that analogy before when I said you overstarched them. The overstarchiness uh, doesn't necessarily make them stick to the wall as much as that it um, makes them, makes them unpaddle unpalatable and over uh, overly like salty like it's a bad texture in your mouth um, like I said you're better off having if you get tired of doing too much mixing you're better off having a little bit of lumps of some little chunks of some fresh potato as opposed to having something that's just soupy or overly starchy What's wrong? Well, I'm making uh, potatoes, and I have a lot, to, a lot more mixing to do. I have a lot more mixing to do, so um, we're gonna get back on this mixing again. Like I said, all of this stuff is pretty laborious. So that's why I say PJ was saying, "Well, why did you uh, make such a, a big amount of potatoes?" Well, look at the amount of work I'm having to do, PJ. This is just—it's excruciating. I'm ready to take a nap for crying out loud. <laughs> if you're going to do all this work, uh, by golly, just make it worth the while. And Because uh, like I said, these freeze perfectly fine. You take them out, you pop them in the microwave oven, or you put them in the, the oven and, and uh, thaw them out that way, or you know what? Um, uh, they don't go bad. Sort of like 
you know, um, the amount of work that it takes to, that it goes into making one of those mojitos that, I guess that's the Payline's favorite drink of choice, um, is the mojito. And I did a video on that, and first time, and it was pretty laborious in a way. It wasn't just, you know, doo -doo -doo, you know, it was some labor involved. And um, now for PJ's cocktails, I'm pretty sure that, that um, you know, e expertly done like yourself, you know, it's just wham, bam, bam, and delicious every time. I'd like to have one of those sometime. But um, but my experience was doing it, uh, and then after the video, then um, we had some leftovers, so I had them for, you know, maybe a week, I think, leftovers week or two weeks of leftovers for those uh, ingredients that we, we bought for making the mojito. Um, I didn't want it to go to waste. So, uh, it, yes, yeah, it's, it's a laborious kind of uh, drink to do. So you guys that are, you know, when the restaurants and bars open back up, you know, don't forget to tip your bartender, with, especially if you order mojito, because a lot of work went into that preparation. So don't forget to tip your bartender, guys, when they open back up. So let's get back to some mixing. Let's see if I have to add any more milk. I don't think I will, but let's see. If I do, it's a very slight amount. I am going to add just a little bit of milk so that I can blend a little bit better, easier I mean. The thing is perfect, I'm going to add just a very slight amount though. Just slight. Because I do want them to stick to the wall and they would right now. But I do want just a little bit. I don't know you guys can see, I'm just going to a little bit more, not much. Voila. So, that was very little just so I can... Make it a little smoother, that's all. Because I do like them thick. A potato should be pretty much throw them and stick them on the wall kind of thickness. Yeah, yeah, that's working good. It's letting me do a little bit better blending, mixing. Now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this down for a second and I'm going to uh, spoon that around and mix it so that I can get to some of that stuff a little easier. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this big spoon and hopefully you guys can, you guys can still see. I'm just sort of I'm trying to move this stuff around so that some of my bigger pieces are more accessible to that mixer. But you can see, like, that's the kind of thickness you're looking for for your mashed potatoes. And so I'm going to do a little bit more. You don't want to be chintzy. You don't want to be chintzy on your mixing. I know it's a lot of work. I got a cramp in my arm and all this, but you want to keep going to get it, you know, as smooth as you can. It's, it's you're going to be happy about it. Okay, let's get back to this business.
Okay, now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more black pepper because uh, I didn't want to overdo it last time. And I want to get it to this point where now I can put some more black pepper. I want my wife to do a test taste to see where we're at with the salt. And because, uh, like I said, I, I want to trust somebody that's got a good palate. She does. Honey, tell me what you think about Do I need more salt or is it perfect? Okay, she's saying just a little bit. Okay, that's a little bit. And we're going to go back to some more black pepper. You don't want to overdo it. Like I said, you do want to be able to taste some pepper in every bite. Okay. All right, so now let's get back to some more mixing and then we're almost done. Don't forget, guys, that whoever's eating, they can always add a little bit more salt if they want to. Better to be a little less in the salt because that's not good for a lot of people's health. People can salt the taste on their own at the table, on their own plate. So always keep that in mind. We did sling a little bit of potatoes around the place, but as I, I can show you, look at that. Nice creamy white and it won't even come off of the stick, I mean the spoon. Look at that. That's what you're looking for guys when you're making these mashed potatoes. And like I said, it's time consuming, it's very laborious, but if you want homemade mashed potatoes, that's the only way to do it. And my way, remember it's my way or the highway. I did it my way. Speaking of singing, maybe I should do some karaoke. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to put a plate together uh, for my dinner. I'm not going to eat right now, but I'm going to go ahead and plate it up because I want to make a, a nice uh, presentation for you guys to see. And uh, then I'll just cover it up, put it in the refrigerator. And like I said, like PJ was saying, yeah, that is an enormous amount of mashed potatoes, but it's a lot of work. I'm not going to make less than that if I'm making mashed potatoes from scratch. So. Uh, like I said, some of this can go in the freezer, or I might share with my neighbor, Dennis. Um, but nevertheless, it's a lot of work, so make it worth your while. So thanks for watching Island Reaction. I'm going to get this plated up so you can see the nice presentation of what it all comes together with these stuffed bell peppers and mashed potatoes.
Hang on guys, I'm getting this presentation ready for you. Yeah, absolutely. Like the way this looks. Huh? Where's my big spoon? Okay. Alright, guys, I'm not ready for to show you yet, so don't be peeking. Okay? Don't be peeking, but they can see you when you I know. I know they can see me, but just don't be looking because I'm not ready to show you yet up close. All right, so I may get into more potatoes than that, but we'll see. All right, guys, so here you go. There is our stuffed bell pepper with homemade mashed potatoes, and that's our sauce gravy. And absolutely terrific. Now I'm just going to pop that in the microwave so it's ready for me when I'm ready to eat, which is not now. And cover this other stuff up. Oh, so. Thank you for joining us, everybody, here on Island Reaction. I am Cameron Cooper. Thanks for watching our live stream for stuffed bell peppers and mashed potatoes, homemade. Thanks, Peggy. Thanks, PJ. And thanks, to everybody. Uh, Pay lines. Thanks, to everybody, for watching, Charles and LJ. And uh, thanks for supporting our channel. Um, yeah, I'm going to sign off this live stream here. If I come back, I can't promise. If I come back, it would be for karaoke. But I don't know yet. I got a I got a mess to clean up here, so let me see how I do with cleaning up my mess. I, I got to get some of this stuff in the freezer and uh, and things like that. So, so and I got to take care of some more refreshments. So uh, let me see how things get. I may come back for a live stream of karaoke. I cannot promise you, but I would love to do that. So thanks again for watching, everybody. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up for a like. Thanks again, guys.